higher because the new ions were in the wrong environment of the dipoles around them. But what was not stated is where did the extra energy come from? And then I realized what was wrong was that the postulate that Libby had when applied to these reactions violated the law of conservation of energy. Now, there are not many things that scientists hold sacred. But one of the things is the law of conservation of energy. It's the fundamentals of thermodynamics, which all students study, usually in second year college or something like that. And so the question was, in my mind, how could one rationalize things? How could one take this marvelous idea of Libby and somehow change things so that it wouldn't violate a well-established principle. And I realized that, what, that the electron couldn't just jump. That part was wrong. What had to happen was that before the jump, the water molecules around each ion had to fluctuate in ways that are inappropriate to the old charges inappropriate to the new charges, but someplace halfway in between in the way they reorient. So something had to occur in the fluctuations of the solvent molecules around these ions before the electron could actually jump and not violate law of conservation of energy. Well, prior to this, I'd worked on problems which had nothing to do with reaction rates, but had a lot to do with the interaction of charges with solvent molecules. I had read extensively on it. I published some papers on it. So I had a very good background in that at that point. I built up my background of what's called electrostatics for these systems. In college, in second year college, I had had a course in electricity and magnetism. So there was that background. But that was so small and compared with the greater depth that you had to go into for this kind of problem. And based upon that, and based upon reading what was going on in the physics community at the time for different problems, behavior of electrons and semiconductors, polaron theory, and so on, I extended the conventional electrostatics of interaction of charges with dipoles and so on, extended that to this type of system where you had to have fluctuations, something occurring non-equilibrium electrostatics before the electron could jump. Well, the key thing, of course, was find, finding out how to do that, and I found a way of, uh, how to do that, how to calculate how much, so to speak, energy and entropy and so on were required to produce that change. And then in 1956, I published an equation which described the reaction rate in terms of these concepts. You know, it's interesting. I've noticed this a number of times in development of a theory. That sometimes you may derive, develop some equation which experimentalists would then like to apply to the experimental data. But sometimes that equation it looks so complicated that no experimentalist is going to try to apply it. Just too complicated. So one idea in theory, when you develop equations, is to see whether, either with no further approximations or with further approximations, you can simplify things so that it's in a nice form to apply to experimental data. So if one looks at my 1956 paper, one sees some equations that are this long. Terrible. Ugly. Certainly not simple. But then, during the course of writing that paper, I realized that if I use certain theorems, mathematical theorems connected with electrostatics, adding a term there, subtracting an equal term there, and so on, I could obtain a simple equation. And that almost came as a eureka moment to go from something where one is derived, complicated looking, a little juggling, with no further approximation, but a little juggling, and all of a sudden, a simple equation emerged. 
like a god coming out of the water. Well, I think that's the most exciting moment I've ever had. Whenever my late wife was in the audience, I would, I would always be careful to say, that was the most exciting scientific moment I ever had. Uh, so we derived this equation. And uh, I'm not sure if it's on the next slide, although these are the, this is another type of electron transfer reaction. Here the uh, elements are the same, but they, in general they can be different. And many of those reactions began to be studied. And we, that, that helped simulate the theory. The theory simulated them. Uh, this is intended just to describe what I've already been talking about. You have water molecules less ordered around one charge than they are around the other. You need to have some intermediate fluctuation eventually. But that's de detail that we need to be concerned with. And then, uh, uh, you know, in any theory, the constant.